right okay so um last couple of sessions we covered quite a bit about the holy spirit right? the person of the holy spirit that is what we are we are learning right so um so what did you understand what what was your takeaway from those two sessions two hours that we spent um what is it you know without looking into your notes what is it that's staying with you about the holy spirit okay anyone just one thing you can share uh, online folks also you can put it in the chat that's just the one thing that uh, that stayed with you or uh, that kind of stood out um that was highlighted what we learned about the holy spirit anyone holy spirit is god okay that's one thing that stood out for you okay anyone else holy spirit he has emotions okay that he can be grieved right he can be saddened he can um, he can be quenched yeah okay anyone else holy spirit is omnipresent he's present everywhere not confined to one place time yeah that's true okay um okay our fellowship with the holy spirit that's something that stood out okay uh, krishna yeah read that um yeah just go ahead and put it on the chat anyone else here about the trinity yes and uh, what is it that mm mm yeah so we looked at we said about the trinity check check 2 3 check 2 3 um check i guess you can i guess you can hear me now yeah if you can hear me okay okay just got my headset on right okay so uh, i see some more comments here holy spirit uh, coming through our hearts okay Mm, I'm not too sure what do you mean by that, uh, Arila. Um, you can you can put down on the chat. Okay, our fellowship with the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit is the one who will be with uh, within. Yes, uh, within us. He is the one who guides us and protects us. Um, okay, so Arila, if you see, um, if you can just clarify, you know, Holy Spirit coming through our hearts. You can just put it on the chat. Um, Okay so Nina says he abides with us forever he testifies and points to Jesus he speaks okay wonderful so we looked at all this um in our last uh, in our last session right okay uh, 
just one second. Okay. Okay, so today, uh, any other responses here? Any other things that we learned? Okay, so based on what we learned, okay, before we get into our notes, based on what we learned, okay, how has it changed your relationship with God? Did it change or not change? Okay. You can be honest. If you say it didn't change, it's OK. But if it changed, then you can, you can let, me, let me know. In what way? Right? So did it change your relationship with God, your relationship with the Holy Spirit? Um, that's the question. OK. Anyone here? Uh, on the chat also, you can just put it, you know. See, we, we looked at several things. Trinity, we looked at uh, who the Holy Spirit is. We looked at the person of the Holy Spirit. So we got some understanding of it, which you all shared. OK, this stood out. So did it really change your, OK, it changed our understanding. But it, did it change our relationship? Right? That's a That's an important thing, right? So, if so, in what way? So that's the question. Okay, anyone? Did it change our relationship with the Holy Spirit? Okay. So here's what. Uh, here's something that um, you know. I just wanted to share that. See, see we have this um, understanding that has changed. Right about God, the fact that hey, he can be lied to, he has emotions, um, he speaks, he leads, etc. He can be quenched. Okay, so which means that um, since my understanding has changed, now I need to move in and take that step and say, okay, God, um, I'm going to invite you now. With this understanding, with this revelation, I'm just inv I'm inviting you for an encounter. Okay, right. so he's saying that. Okay, he speaks. God, I want to hear you more. Right, I want to hear you more. Um, well, you can be grieved. Uh, I'm going to stop doing those things that grieve you. Right. Uh, well, you lead and you guide. Um, I need leading. I need guidance. So I just want to encounter more of that, and I want to I want to be led in my decisions. In um, just let me give you a minute. Um, yeah. Okay. Krishna says uh, more aware of his emotions now. That's good. So so the thing is this. You know, we we invite him. And we yield, even as we invite we ourselves, we yield and say, Lord, um, you show me in, the, in all these ways. You show up in my life in all these ways. Right? So that's, that's something, you know, that is um, something that we need to do because we, we, it's good that we are hearing the word. It's good that we are understanding the word, getting this revelation of the word and saying, wow, there's so much. Uh, but we need to move into, you know, putting things into uh, practice, right? Applying the word, because God always invites us. You know, the the fact that He shows Himself, reveals Himself, is because that He wants to be that in our lives, right? Not just for us to, you know, learn something new, yeah. But He wants to be that. He wants to show Himself, you know, strong on our behalf. Right? That's the beauty, right? He, he because He is. We saw, you know, He's the God who speaks, so He wants to speak to us. He's the God who leads, so He wants to lead. Us lead me right, personally, right? so that's the very important thing. Okay, so so even as we you know uh, learn all these things, um, you ask God, right? you ask the Holy Spirit. You say, Lord, I want to be led by you. I want you to speak to me, and and He will. I want you to show me God, and He will. Okay, okay. Let's move on to um, chapter three, right? Okay, so we're in chapter three. And we're looking at the work of the Holy Spirit in the Old Testament. OK, 
okay the work of the holy spirit in the old testament okay um so question uh, was god you know is, is it the same god that we're talking about in the old testament and the new testament or is he is it a different god same god right same in the old testament and new testament but we see in the in in the way he in the way he ministered in the way he moved there is a difference there is a difference before the cross and there is a difference after the cross right so what is the difference specifically regarding the holy spirit okay what is the difference the way in which he ministered the way you know what is the difference the difference is this that before christ ascended and uh, he said you know i send the promise of the father okay that is what he said right i send the promise of the father he will come he will abide with you for ever right that is we we see that the, the the lord promising that in i think john chapter 15 i guess 14 15 16 you know um, and we see that happening in the book of acts right acts chapter 1 acts chapter 2 acts chapter 2 specifically we see that happening right so there is a difference in the old testament the holy spirit would come upon the people uh, he would come empower someone he would come you know uh, on a for a specific assignment and lead them to do that and then he would go right but in the new dispensation that is after the cross he comes to abide with us forever stay with us forever so that is why we have the indwelling presence of the holy spirit okay so there is a big difference right the way he moved in the old testament the way he moved in the new testament okay but there's so much that we can learn about the holy spirit about the way he you know the, the way he moved the what he did in the old testament okay so we're going to look at how and what the holy spirit did in the old testament and we're going to learn a lot of things just like how we you know learned that holy spirit is a person we're going to see it's going to really open up our understanding oh the holy spirit can do this the holy spirit can do this also right okay so let's uh, let's go so we see uh, genesis we see that holy spirit you know like we saw he was god present at creation he was moving over the waters and uh, we see uh, that there's a there's a word that used there you know genesis chapter 1 and um, that word that hebrew word it, it, it uh, in english we we see that um, the holy the spirit of god was hovering over the face of the waters right so that genesis 1 verse 2 um the hebrew word which is used there rakaf which means to brood over like how a hen would brood over the her, her eggs that that bunch of eggs in order to bring it to hatching right so that's the word that we see here Right. So the Holy Spirit was actually, literally, birthing creation, and right? He was hovering over the waters. So that is something that we see here. Right? Okay. Um, we, when we read through, um, there are a couple of uh, references again in Genesis, um, Genesis six and verse three. Okay, just keep your Bibles handy. We're going to be reading through a lot more, a lot of references. Um, so Genesis six and verse three. Uh, this is after the flood and the lord is saying my spirit shall not strive uh, with man forever for he is indeed flesh yet his days shall be 125 years okay so he's saying i will not strive my spirit will not strive with man okay then uh, i'm just skipping a few things we're going to genesis 41 okay genesis 41 and uh, Okay, verse 38, right? Genesis 41, 38. So here, um, we, we see about, uh, we read about Joseph. We, we see that he is in Pharaoh's court. And, um, and this is what we see. Okay, verse, um, uh, you know, he interprets the dream for Pharaoh. And this is what the Pharaoh testifies. He says, verse 38, can we find such a one as this? A man in whom is the spirit of God. Okay, so now, um, in fact, uh, Joseph himself says, uh, verse fifteen. If you if you go, if you see there, just back to verse fifteen. Pharaoh said to Joseph, "I have had a dream, 
and there is no one who can interpret it. But I have heard it said of you that you can understand a dream to interpret it. So Joseph answered Pharaoh saying, it is not in me. God will give Pharaoh an answer of peace. So he's saying it is God who does this. Does what? Give the understanding of the dream and the interpretation of the dream. It is God who does this. So for, uh, for Joseph, the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit gave him an understanding of the dream and also the interpretation of the dream. Now, was it important or not? What do you think? This particular interpretation uh, for the Pharaoh, was it important or not? How important was it? Mm. I think that's Daniel. <laughs> right. So here, yeah. So we see here that um, uh, you know nobody could interpret. You're right in the sense at the end of uh, uh, the. Well, let's read verse 41. You know, he has this dream of seven cows coming after, and then the seven, uh, the, the 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 thin ones, eat up the uh, seven fine-looking cows or the fat cows, and then he dreamed a second time, and then seven heads of uh, grain come up, which are um, you know thin, and then the fat one, and then the thin ones actually um, uh, spring up and devour the fat ones. Right. So yeah. So verse 8 is what you're referring to. He calls the magicians and uh, no one could interpret. Okay, uh, And then the butler says, um, yeah, oh, there was this man in prison and he could interpret. So he interprets. Now, OK, so this dream is interpreted. So how important was it? You know, sorry? OK, it was important because Pharaoh could not sleep. Okay, that's what Rinchen, Rinchen, right? Rinchen is saying. Okay, anyone? Um, okay, I see Krisha. Okay, saying it was important for Egypt's future. Yeah, it was a matter of life and death. Why? There are going to be seven years of plenty, followed by seven years of famine. Okay, so it's it's actually a foretelling of the land's future. And it came to Joe, uh, the Pharaoh in a dream. And the interpretation also comes now through uh, Joseph. And it was a very important. It was a, for the nation of Egypt. right? And we see that Joseph, not only does he give the understanding or the interpretation, but because of the wisdom of God that was in him, right? we read prior to that, the Spirit of God, you know, uh, being in him, and he he handled all the responsibilities very wisely because the Lord was with him. He gives a strategy, right, for the nation of Egypt, because of which they store up, they save, and they are able to go through those years of famine. Okay, so how did this come from the Holy Spirit? Right, so you see. For a, maybe you know, you know we think okay I'm not in a place where I can give strategies for nations but maybe, maybe there are people and maybe there God can use you to bring that strategy or bring that understanding right See? now maybe the, there are people maybe there's the chief minister the prime minister the president who's having dreams and they don't know they maybe they just think that ah oh, it's just a dream so it's just a dream about India right. Maybe they're having dreams and, uh, and you know, looking for those Josephs to interpret and give that understanding, right? And maybe it's something to do with your own family. Maybe it's something to do with, uh, you know, the, where you are, right? So someone has a dream and God is, you know, speaking something because there's no other way that they would maybe receive that message. Maybe there's no other way. Maybe there's no reference for God in their lives. Right? Maybe somebody like that. No reference for God. Or they don't care whether God is alive or not. Or whether God wants to speak to them or not. They don't care. But God cares. And God gives them a message. How? Through the dream. Because they're not going to listen any other way. And the fact is, those who have the Spirit of God in them can rely on Holy Spirit, 
rely on the spirit of god and bring forth the interpretation so you see you know the spirit of god can do it in our day and time as he did in the old testament in those days right okay let's let's move on we go to exodus okay now this is very very interesting exodus chapter 28 okay where uh, we again learn about okay what the holy spirit can do now so you see we give this we get this understanding that god is interested in our nation god is interested in the affairs of the land uh, because we are his creation right? he's not saying okay you guys do what you want you don't even worship me right it's, this land is full of you know a pagan a paganism no egypt was like that there were sun worshippers you know all kinds of things they were worshiping but god intervened in their lives he cared so that they should not perish they should have enough grain right so god can do that so here you know let's uh, look at exodus 28 and we're going to look at verse 3 what does it say so shall uh, okay just a little bit of background moses everybody is in the wilderness they've come out of egypt uh, the people of israel you know is this whole group which is there in the wilderness and then god is giving some very clear instructions for uh, Moses, for uh, Aaron, so that they can build a tabernacle in order to worship him. Okay, they've come out, come out of Egypt, so that's the background, right? Okay, so so God is saying, uh, let's read from verse one, Exodus twenty-eight. Now take Aaron your brother and his sons with him from among the children of Israel, that he may minister to me as priest. Aaron and Aaron's sons. Nadab, Abihu, Eliezer, and Ithamar, and you shall make holy garments for Aaron, your brother, for glory and for beauty. Look at verse 3. So you shall speak to all who are gifted artisans, whom I have filled with the spirit of wisdom, that they may make Aaron's garments to consecrate him, that he may minister to me as priest. Okay, so who, who's an artisan? He's a skilled workman. Okay, and art, when you say a skilled workman, you're saying like uh, somebody who is skilled in maybe um, carvings, somebody who's quick, skilled in making jewelry, okay, somebody who's, who's skilled in stonework, carpentry. Okay? They make beautiful things out of these natural materials. Okay, so an artisan. Maybe they are, they can paint. Maybe they can make um, you know pottery and all that. So an artisan. So what is God saying? So you shall speak to all who are gifted artisans. Okay, who are there? Who were there at that time? He says, uh, whom I have filled with the spirit of wisdom, that they may make Aaron's garments to consecrate him, that he may minister to me as priest. Okay. So just hold that. Just go to uh, chapter thirty-one and uh, verses 2 to 5 okay chapter 31 let me just read from verse 1 then the lord spoke to moses saying see i have called by name bezalel the son of uri the son of hur of the tribe of judah and i have filled him with the spirit of god in wisdom in understanding in knowledge and in all manner of workmanship to design artistic works to work in gold in silver in bronze in cutting jewels for setting in carving wood and to work in all manner of workmanship okay all manner of workmanship what is all this you know uh, artistic work working with gold working with silver working with bronze um, and carving, carving wood, cutting jewels for setting it in all these things. And then he says, I have filled him with the spirit of wisdom. Spirit of God, sorry. In wisdom, in understanding, in knowledge. So who has filled? God has filled with his own spirit this person, Bezalel, so that he can be skilled in, do these, in doing these things. Right? Of course, it's for the tabernacle. But the fact is that we understand that God can actually fill someone, empower someone, and gift someone in these areas, right? So anybody does painting, uh, carvings, jewelry, so, who, who's that? 
you you look at it you paint is it okay so so the thing is that you know designing everything god is interested right god is interested and he can actually fill or even enhance that na those natural abilities even further and give those abilities to you know do these design works right i remember um, there was this um, uh, this is going to okay um, so there was this um, mother and the uh, uh, whom we knew and then and the daughter actually um, she joined this national institute of design nid uh, some of the premier institutes right for design in in india so she joined that institute and she was uh, you know learning uh, art and design work and uh, there in that company they had uh, i mean in that institute they had um, a company which is titan uh, all of you know titan right watch watches and you know in fact titan when they when they started they really changed the you know the way wa watches were you know, watches were many functional you know uh, those days we had hmt anybody knows hmt watch okay hmt watches um well good watches very good but design wise very simple rather simple right so titan when titan came in titan uh, you know the tata company uh, the, the, the design uh, the watch section so when titan came in they really changed that right the watches suddenly it became fashionable to wear watches right because they were shaped like jewelry they were they were shaped like you know uh, and, and all those the face of the watch had so much of design come in so titan wanted to um wanted these students who were design students to come up with a design for their watch okay so they decision they said okay um you design you know uh, of the watch face and if yours gets selected then uh, you know you you get a cash you get a prize you get a cash award and also you know something you know like you get to work with a company or get to train with the company and all that so so that was uh, you know that was a thing so um, so as, as soon as the mother you know she heard about this she was very excited okay so she went to the because she had read this so she went to all these scriptures exodus 28 exodus 31 and said lord you filled bezalel and so you fill my daughter with the holy spirit you fill my daughter you give her the ability lord you give her those dreams you give her the creative ability to come up with a design um, so that it will it will stand you know far out and better than any other design because it's from you god so you give her that thing so she started praying that each and every day and um, and lo and behold you know this is what happened so her design got selected and uh, uh, above uh, you know more than all the other students and so some of their students were really good you know some some of the best in the country actually you know get trained in national institute of design but th this is what she prayed she said my daughter you know you said god spirit of god you can do it so uh, you know uh, let my daughter be filled with your spirit and, and and that's what happened right so so karen if you're painting <laughs> so you say lord give me those prophetic you know art you know what what is in your heart that you want me to represent depict in this painting okay what is it that you want to show forth uh, you know um just as an aside you know art can be very very powerful you know a painting can be very very powerful uh, we've read testimonies and, and prophetic art you know right where god inspires and god speaks and god gives you what and tells you what you need to put put on that canvas and you go ahead and do it and that can be a message by itself for someone who is watching it okay and there was this uh, very interesting testimony of this person um who came to that particular church and that church where they have a time of you know painting okay? as the worship is going on they will paint okay so um so this person uh, was painting and uh, she had um, uh, she had this you know she she was asking god what should i paint and then she had this thing to paint a particular bird i forget what bird but that bird and she said that you know she's terrible at painting it like she cannot paint that but she, she anyway she went ahead god since you're asking me to do it i'll go ahead i'll paint i'll do it okay so she's there and then she's just painting and and in that church came this lady um she saw this artwork and she just burst into tears okay and after church came and met her after the service came and met her and said you know why did you paint that so she said no the lord asked me to paint and so she said no uh, you know me and my brother 
he's no more. Uh, but we started, we wanted to start a company. We wanted to get into, you know, this particular area of media and making films and all that. And, and we wanted to get into that. But, um, and God, we, 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 we had this vision, you know, this particular bird that you painted was supposed to be the logo, was supposed to be the, you know, everything to do with it. And so, um, but suddenly he passed away. And I was so disappointed, and I was so filled with regret and all that, and uh, and I, I I just thought, you know, I just shelved that dream. Okay, we, I didn't go ahead with this. It was supposed to be a media ministry kind of thing, but I didn't go forward with it. I just I I grew bitter, angry with God. Uh, I didn't understand why this would happen. So, and after all those years, uh, today I came to church. Yeah, I said, okay, get me, let me just come to church. And I came here and I saw this and uh, I believe that the God has, you know, touched me. God wants to, you know, God has done this work of healing. Uh, he's brought me closer and I feel all these burdens lifted, lifting off. I don't feel angry anymore. I don't feel bitter anymore. Just imagine, Spirit of God who knows, like you said, you know, he's omniscient, omnipresent, he knows. So he drops this thought into this artist and says okay do this if she said okay god you know let me paint something here let me paint horse i'm good at painting horses but maybe not this bird right would have missed it completely but then she painted this and it was prophetic because it came from the heart of god who knew the needs of people who would be coming that day she painted it and there was this person who came closer to god who received the healing uh, in in the in her heart after all those years because of that artwork okay wow so god is a god who gives those creativity you know who enhances and strengthens uh, our creativity holy spirit god okay so we see this um in exodus 31 and 35 also talks about the same thing right 35 and i think it's uh, um, 31 Okay, let's, uh, yeah. And he has filled him with the spirit of God and wisdom and understanding and knowledge on all manner of workmanship. Okay, so so that, you know, really, um, okay, NIFT alumni. Okay, Krishna, so you know this? Oh, you're an NIFT alumni? Okay. Oh, wonderful. So, so I, yeah, so it's NIFT, not NIB, I guess. Okay. Wonderful. So, so anyway, so the so this is something that you can you know um, you can really uh, stand strong in and say, God, you know, you did this, you fill me, and uh, show me what I need to do, and how my you know the work of my hands can be redemptive in your hands, and how it can reach out, and uh, and all that. Yeah. So all the best. Have a great adventure. <laughs> okay. Right. So we see this. Okay. Um, Exodus. Let's move on. Numbers 11, okay. uh, we, we may not go into each and every uh, verse, you know, but uh, I'd like to encourage you to, you know, go to those uh, scripture portions um, and read through. Okay, let's read um, Numbers 11, and we are reading from 17, right? So this is something that happened uh, in, again, in the time of Moses, uh, along with the children of Israel. Okay. So the Lord said to Moses, Gather to me 70 men of the elders of Israel, whom you know to be the elders of the people and officers over them. Bring them to the tabernacle of meeting that they may stand there with you. Okay. So there are these. Um, see, just before that, if you see, uh, if you read verse, uh, sorry, chapter 11, you see that Moses is having a tough time with the people. Okay, why people are complaining? It's not just one or two. It's not like a classroom of twenty, but it's it's many people. Right? It's like the nation of Israel, right? And they are complaining, they are grumbling, and they are saying, um, you know, they are just uh, hey, uh, in Egypt we were so better, so much better. We had great food, we had fish, we had cucumber, we had melons, and all this now. You know, this, they're complaining about about manna. They're complaining about everything. You know, there's nothing except manna before us. Right? So they're complaining. And Moses reaches a place where he's saying, God, just kill me here. Okay. So Moses is saying, Lord, you only you kill me. I can't stand this anymore. 
I don't want to be the leader. I don't. I can't lead these people. They're complaining. Very difficult people. Why don't you just kill me, Lord? End it all. Okay. He he's reached, he's just such a place. So the Lord is saying, you pick seventy elders, bring them. Okay, and they bring the elders. Then verse seventeen, he says, then I will come down and talk with you there. I will take of the spirit that is upon you, and put the same upon them, and they shall bear the burden of the people with you that you may not bear it yourself alone okay so the lord is saying okay bring these elders now um, bring them here to the tent of meeting and i will put some of what you are carrying by the holy spirit and i will take that and put it upon the elders so what is this that he's going to do what is what is the Holy Spirit doing here? He says, I'll take some of the spirit that is upon you and put it upon the elders, all these 70 elders. So why is he doing that? It's there in the verse, but he's doing that. Yeah, so what does that mean? Yes. Yeah. So he says, uh, so that you don't have to bear the burden anymore. They will also carry the burden. So the, this burden of leadership, this weight of leadership, this whole huge responsibility of leadership. Now, one man has been bearing it. Uh, the Lord is saying, no, it'll be upon these others also. Uh, they will be the leaders. They will talk to the people. They will bear some of that load. So you don't have to bear it alone. Okay, so, um, so that's a very important uh, lesson here that we see um, in, in verse uh, 17. Okay, let's, uh, and you know, 18 onwards, it talks about how that happens, right? Uh, Moses goes, verse 24, he told the people the words of the Lord. He gathered the 70 and placed them around the tabernacle. Verse 25, then the Lord came down in the cloud and spoke to them and took off the spirit that was upon him and placed the same upon the 70 elders and it happened when the spirit rested upon them that they prophesied although they did never did so again okay and it talks about how two of them who did not come they also were prophesying right and uh, uh, and uh, they're saying lord should we ask them to stop in fact it's joshua he's saying lord stop you know moses uh, my lords forbid them stop them they didn't come to the tent they are in their own tents and they are you know, prophesying. Then Moses says, verse 29, you know, oh, that all the Lord's people were prophets and that the Lord would put his spirit upon them. So that was Moses' heart. He's saying that the Lord, that all of the Lord's people, that they would have an encounter, that they would be filled with the spirit and they would prophesy. So the thing is this, the Holy Spirit can take care of leadership burdens, the weight of leadership. Okay, how many of you have had um, like if you've led the team, maybe you have time. How many of you led a team? Maybe you were a team leader, maybe in where you were studying or uh, anyone. Okay. So I see, okay, somebody here. Okay, some hands going up. Okay. So, so is it easy? Okay, Nina saying yes. Shivakumar, yes. So is it um, easy or difficult? What do you think? Why is it difficult? <laughs> because everyone has their own opinion. Okay, because it's people. Right? It's people, and no two people are alike. They have their own likes, dislikes, and um, you know it. It depends. It depends on uh, you know how the team is. If the team is um, well of one uh, united, one heart, one mind, one vision, then it's so much easier. Right? We're saying, okay, hey, we are going. This is the direction we are going. Everybody's agreed, fine, let's go. But everybody's saying, no, why should we go there? You know, why can't we go like this? Why can't we turn around? Why today? You know, why should we go there today? Right? Then you have differing opinions and differing, you know, things. And then people are saying, um, so all this, you know, there's disunity. And there could be conflicts, right? But, you know, there could be just two people fighting over some silly thing, some something which is so insignificant and it becomes a big thing they're not talking to each other and then 
there's division etc you know so you know you know the 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 whole weight of leadership even for a small team you, you know that it's not easy so so you can imagine right big responsibilities you know maybe um, well uh, maybe in the days ahead god would um, use you to be uh, or promote you to positions of leadership right uh, it could be uh, the company uh, it could be in an organization it could be church it could be ministry well the lord is saying that i would empower you right not only that that i would i would raise up others and i, I would empower them as well okay the way he did for moses so who does it the holy spirit does it right so you see well you see we saw creation we saw artistic work see leadership in all these ways interpretation of dreams you know uh, strategy for the nation the holy spirit is involved in it right so that um, well definitely expands our understanding okay yeah i'm just reading the comments here fine okay let's look at one more okay um uh, numbers 27 right let's go to numbers 27 and um verse 18 okay this is the lord's instruction to moses now he's talking about succession in leadership okay so moses um is is, is going to you know pass away and after him there needs to be a leader to lead the nation so uh, so it, it's about this right so we see 27 and verse 18 and the lord said to moses take joshua the son of nun with you a man in whom is the spirit and lay your hand on him set him before eliezer the priest and before all the congregation and inaugurate him in their sight and you shall give some of your authority to him and, the, and that all the congregation of the children of israel may be obedient he shall stand before eliezer the priest who shall inquire before the lord for him by the judgment of the urim at this at his word they shall go out and at his word they shall come and he and all the children of israel with him all the congregation so moses did as the lord commanded him he took joshua and set him before eliezer the priest and before all the congregation and he laid hands on him and inaugurated him just as the lord commanded by the hand of moses okay so um we see this happening and also if you would turn to deuteronomy um chapter 34 and verse 9 Deuteronomy chapter 34 and uh, verse 9. This is what we see, right? Now Joshua, the son of Nun, was full of the spirit of wisdom, for Moses had laid his hands on him, so the children of Israel heeded him and did as the Lord had commanded Moses. So we see even in you know succession of leadership, God knows and God plans and God instructs and God empowers the next line of leaders as well okay so so we see all this done by the Holy Spirit okay so we'll uh, we'll take a break and then we'll come back in 10 minutes right we'll take a break right now